question is where's the alternator it's right down the bottom almost impossible to get up from the top it sits just behind the driver's seat uh, so I'm going to use some lowering bolts to get to it my four lowering bolts and they locate the subframe to the car very easy to use just replace one bolt at a time then slowly lower it down with the jack and to show you what they look like there they are I haven't needed to use the whole extension this is the subframe that we're actually going to use to convert our smart car into an electric car um, to show you where the alternator lives it lives just down here um, I'm standing where the driver's seat is and this is the back of the car so trying to access that alternator from the back of the car is almost impossible hence I've taken the decision to lower the subframe uh, and then I'm going to open up the rear of the subframe by taking off the springs, the dampers and the cross member and I'll feed the alternator out through this gap through the rear wheel arch just there that's the plan once you start taking a car apart this old you realise just how big a job this could be or how big a job it's becoming um, so there's a lot of rust on this spring um, I intend to replace the spring replace the damper and a shot plast this side um, it's just escalating a little bit out of control having it tight I risk stripping some of the threads off and I don't want that I want to use this bolt again and I don't want it to ping open tight it's just going to drop out now which is what I wanted now I'm going to release the jack down nice and slowly you see that that's when this mark has come back take the jack completely off so to lower this whole assembly I'm going to release this bolt and nut this is an 18 mil spanner on there and a E20 socket on here. I'm going to try by hand. I think these have never been off, so I've got my little extension. And there is movement. Julian, I think we can lower the trolley jack. Trolley jack, okay. Very gently. Push down, Ginny. Can you push down on there? Hey, Dad, that's it. Come on, Dad, push! Push! It's a little bit more, doesn't it? I think you're right, Dad. It's almost down. Oh, yeah. And just a little bit of encouragement. We've tried putting a jack on it, but a jack on a round surface is a little bit unsafe. Um, so we decided to use this, uh, doesn't matter, England have just lost the ashes anyway, uh, so just going to move it down, 
<coughs> down she comes. Perfect six. So as you can see, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, time to put a new one in, isn't it? And I've got one on, on a different subframe, which is in much better condition. It's now been lowered. Two bolts secure on the alternator. One just here. The other just there. And the other one just a little bit further up. Just up to the top. What I'm trying to do now is get onto that locking nut at the back. If I can get to it. Yes, got some movement. So that's a 15 millimeter red socket. I'm just going to switch over now. Ratchet to loosen that off. Which is what I should have done first. So big mistake there. Uh, with a bit of luck, I can take the whole thing out. loose and that's off so the locking nut was I think if I'm lucky it will just push out the back and drop onto the floor um, so yes lesson learnt move the locking nut first with a 15 mil uh, regular socket and then use a, a torque socket an E10 uh, to slacken off the top um, so with a bit of luck I think and a little sucker yeah it will just drop out of the back yeah no big issue um, nice of this that will come off my hand just got to try and get my hand in there All right, I've got a 17 millimeter socket on three extensions and uh, I'm gonna try and just crack that It seems very loose, or I've got the wrong size socket, so I'm just going to put a witness mark on the bolt head to make sure it's rotating. if I can get better access to the electric socket to the rear. Now the alternator is loose, so I've tilted it towards the rear tailgate. And then from the rear, I'm gonna use an extension bar. Face 
and the rear wheel and it gives me better access to the 8mm nut at the top and that'd be this should be the last nut to come out put some penetrating fluid on on this I'm going to leave that on for an hour and then come back to it later as you can see that's now given me better access to removing the alternator which comes up really easily now I uh, wish it's something I had done in the first place I replace the spring on the other side inspection yeah really pleased uh, we'll test this alternator um, but we'll be putting a new one back in its place I've got a little engineer square here to show you what 90 degrees looks like this angle isn't perpendicular to that so it's not at 90 degrees so it's really important that the spring goes back into the car at this angle to achieve that I've put a little white permanent marker on the side there and one on the chassis and I line those two up and then I know that it's in the correct position it won't change the ride dynamics of the car um, I'm going to grease this up to make sure it goes in there really easy and I don't and if I need to take it out again in the future be really easy to do that so this is the bump stop and on my rubber grommet here um, I've got a little white witness mark that lines up with that so I painted it on when I took it off and then the spring slides in through these little ro rubber location things and it actually comes to a stop just there all I have to do then is line up the two witness marks or painted with white permanent marker lift it up in and then I can ease it over the top and that's it the springs on looks nice and then lined up properly so I've got the trolley jack underneath the real hub just going to lift it up, line up the holes for the bolt in. Pretty good. Now I'm going to line up this one, put the nut on, and that will be finished. This is the old belt that came off the car. You can see that it started to crack along the edges of the ribs, and inside it's very gritty. Um, and the belt itself is actually quite stiff. Um, not very flexible. The new belt is very flexible. Uh, the profiles of the ribs themselves are much more defined. Um, just compare the two. There you go, that's the difference. So this will be going on the car and I will keep this as a spare. Um, this is a small, this is my test jig uh, to test the alternator to see if it's performing. This is my, uh, this is a test jig that I've made to test the original alternator. Uh, this represents the engine that would be spinning around. Um, the alternator produces a positive charge that goes back to the battery. And it also has an earth through its body to the body of the car, which eventually goes back to, to the earth side of the battery. So there is my circuit. So all I have to do now is just spin it using my electric drill and I should see a power increase on there. If I don't, uh, I would a, bat a car engine would normally charge it to about 13.5 volts, somewhere around there. Currently, the, bat the battery has 12.8 volts in it, um, but we should see a small charge increase. I don't see a charge increase. So clearly the alternator is dead, uh, hence that's why I've replaced it. So I've just hooked up my tester onto the battery. It's showing 12.8 volts of a new battery, new starter, new alternator. Uh, and now I'm going to test it for the first time to make sure that the, the 
the alternator is charging the battery properly hopefully get up to about 14 volts uh, I do expect to see a drop in voltage initially as the car is started as it draws current let's see here we go there you go it drops down to about 11 that initial hard work has been done and now the alternator will start picking up there she goes excellent uh, fantastic result 